St. Austell Brewery, Hicks, traditional Cornish strong ale. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Bows Reviews. Another one from Cornwall. And this is the St. Austell Brewery Hicks tra Traditional Strong Cornish Ale, which is bottle conditioned. Now, I did try a fair amount of the St. Austell beer down in Cornwall when I was down there recently. And to be honest, I generally came away being not very impressed, shall we say. And I did try it in the bottles and I did try it on cask as well and uh, really sort of just didn't really do much for me at all. I've reviewed both the, <coughs> the tribute and the proper job on the channel. And again, just average. Now, I don't mean to say it's on a par with Marston's as for being absolute dog shit. It's not, not at all. It's, it's okay beer, and it sounds like I'm knocking it, and I, I really shouldn't be doing that because the beer isn't that bad. <clears throat> it's, it's one of them beers that, or one of them brewers, shall we say, that they've so far, I'm not gonna rule this out yet, and I wanna get onto this in a minute because this does look interesting, but so far their beers have not been memorable. That, I'm going to put it like that because that effectively is what it is. The beer doesn't really offend me. It doesn't have any real nasties in it. Um, not like Marston's, which is just devoid of any flavour or aroma. The St. Austell stuff does have some flavour, but it's not big and it's not memorable. And that really, that really, I wouldn't say it disappoints me, but they could be a really good brewery. They are independent, they have been going since 1851, and they have generally a good reputation down in the West Country. And they own quite a lot of pubs. Now, I mentioned on the other videos that I've done before of the reviews of the Cornish beers and Devon beers, uh, St. Austell, I wouldn't say have got a monopoly, but they own a, currently 190 pubs around the Devon and Cornwall region, which may not sound like a lot, but when you consider that a lot of pubs have closed, in the last 10 years. I mean, that's still no mean feat. And they've also taken over the Bath Ales Brewery, which in, well, from what I've tried so far, they're a really good brewery. But not only have they taken that over, recently the head brewer from Bath Ales, uh, a woman called Georgina Young, has taken over as head brewer. Sadly, the previous head brewer uh, died of cancer in 2020, so the Bath Ales head brewer has taken over. Now, I did, as I say, I did really recently try the Bath Ales Gem, and I was really bowled over with that. I thought that was a fantastic beer. I really did enjoy it. I put it up against the Timothy Taylor Bolt Maker, which, in my opinion, is one of the one of the best bitters out there, um, along with the uh, Coniston Bluebird as well. And it held its own. I wouldn't say it was better than the Timothy Taylor, but it did have a really nice rounded flavour, very Moorish, very, very drinkable indeed. And again, that's tribute to how good a brewer Bath Ales are. Now, as I say, I've only tried one of their beers, but if on the strength of that, that really did impress me. I remember the first St. Austell Brewery beer that I tried, which was the Tribute. And I do remember thinking, this isn't that great. It's not bad, but it isn't bowling me over. Not like the the Bath Ales Gem did. And I did try pro Proper Job as well, which I think is their attempt at an IPA. And again, it just really didn't do much for me at all. Not insipid flavors, but just, I would say boring flavors, if you know what I mean. It, they didn't really stand out. They didn't really have much character. That's the word, that's the phrase I'm looking for. And I'm hoping that this is gonna be a bit, a bit better. Bloody hell, I've not even had a drink yet. 
It is, as they say, a traditional strong Cornish ale, but it comes in at 5%. Now, again, this is something that I, I have little, not sort of rules, but I have expectations of strong ales. Now, if I'm gonna be drinking what's known as a strong ale, I wanna see it at least 5.5, preferably six, preferably higher. Now, that doesn't genuinely mean it's gonna be a good beer because I tried the Celtic Brewery Beheaded uh, yesterday, which again is a, a not a Cornish strong ale. I th well, I think it does describe itself as a, a Cornish strong ale, but that was, again, very, how can I put this? It just, just not much character at all. It really didn't impress me. And I'm really hoping that this is going to buck that trend because I wouldn't say I've got a downer on Cornish beer. That's, that's harsh. But I'm not too impressed with the character of Cornish beers. I think they're very, very average, characterless beers. Not nasty, certainly drinkable, but just not not outstanding they certainly don't compete with the stuff from from yorkshire as an example or even london either i mean the fuller's beer does take some beating and there's other good london brewers as well who, who who i wouldn't say they don't have a care but their beers are just just better in my opinion and i think St. Austell, i wouldn't say they need to up their game but they could be better in my opinion that's that's all i'm going to say but um, this, but St. Austell Brewery are a big concern in the West Country. They, as I say, they have 190 pubs. They've been going since 1851. Uh, they brew a good range of beers, varied range of beers. They brew a lager as well, the Korev Lager. Again, coming back to my point, just, just characterless beer. Um, not unpleasant, not offensive, just characterless, which I suppose is better than bad beer. I, I really do think that they could do better, and uh, that's just a personal opinion of mine. Um, and if obviously, if I'm down in the West Country, I'm going to be looking at what what I'm drinking. Um, St. Austell, I'm not going to be my first choice. Neither are the Sharps Brewery stuff as well, which a uh, very kindly uh, subscriber reminded me. I thought it was Marston. It's not Marston. It's Coors, but they are still brewed in uh, Burn on Trent, and yeah, it ain't great. But there you go. So I think I've bored you enough with the details on this brewery. Let's get this investigated. Right, this is a, well, according to the back, it's a 500 ml bottle and it's 5%. I think it should be stronger if it's gonna call itself a Cornish, a, tra a traditional strong Cornish ale. I, would, I wouldn't call it strong, I've had bitters that are stronger than this. There you go, uh, legendary Cornish Ale. Hicks is named after the brewery's founder, Walter Hicks. Full-bodied, brewing with flavors, strong and distinctly Cornish. Mm. If by distinctly Cornish you mean not very impressive, then I really do hope that's not the case. Now this is bottle conditioned and it says on the back, contains natural yeast. Pour slowly, leaving the sediment inside. <laughs> I, I don't know, I don't know where that comes from because I always pour the yeast in. And I still can't work out whether I'm doing the wrong thing or not. And I've tried, I've researched it and all that. Certainly with the Belgian beer and German beers that are bottle conditioned, you need to pour the yeast in and it does make a hell of a difference. Certainly in the German wheat beer, I've done a sort of, on a few videos on a, where I've reviewed German wheat beer, that the, the taste of the beer without the yeast sediment in and with it in, and it makes a world of difference. So. I am not against pouring yeast of English and British beers that are bottle conditioned into the glass. That doesn't bother me at all. I think it's probably, it goes back to this fallacy that they used to have in the UK in, in, in the 70s and 80s and up to the 90s as well, that cloudy beer was bad beer. When it really wasn't. I mean, yeast sediment in beer is not the end of the world. Yes, they are dead yeast cells, but you, you, you eat that in bread. So what's the harm in having it in beer? It, it may add flavour. It, it certainly doesn't taste nasty. Not that I, not from my experience, anyway. Uh, that's that's my opinion on that one. And what else have we got here? Yeah, the chief medical officer recommends adults. Yeah, fuck off, mate. Chief medical officer needs to wind his fucking neck in. 
Ingredients, water, barley, rye, hops, and yeast. Now, I was slightly impressed that they've got rye in here. Well, not impressed, but intrigued that they've got rye in here. Rye is a, it's a type of barley that's used in some beers, and it's sometimes used in conjunction with wheat, sometimes not. But it does give the beer a little bit of flavor and character as well, certainly. It's quite spicy, and that does complement if you've got like IPAs or slightly citrusy hops, then it does complement them. It also gives it a little bit of a spicy flavor, which again, on this, it may not be a bad thing. But it does contain some really interesting, well, I'm saying really inter interesting. If you're into beer, it's gonna be interesting. But it does contain, on the malt front alone, it contains Maris Otter. Now, I don't think I've had a bad beer that's got Maris Otter in. Maris Otter is quite expensive and it's, it's called the Rolls Royce of malts for a reason. It genuinely does make for good beer. And as I say, I, I can't recall Maris Otter being in a beer that I haven't liked. So that may be a good thing in its, um, in its defense. It also contains crystal malt, which again, crystal malt is a, it, it's a, a malt that is sweeter than other malts because the, it, can, it, it produces more sugar, basically, that the, the yeast can feed on. And the unconsumed sugar does add a sweetness to the beer. And generally, uh, crystal malt, again, is a, another good sign of a beer that is gonna taste at least flavorsome. So there you go. And it's also got black malt in there as well. Black malt, I'm assuming it is some kind of dark malt, roasted malt, that kind of thing. The hops that are in here are Progress and Golden Hops. Again, brilliant traditional English hops. The Goldens, I'm not sure which Goldens they are, but Progress certainly. They're characteristically earthy, musty, spicy as well. So on paper, this does look pretty damn good. So all that remains now is to open this up. I had a comment, I think it was today, that the intro was too long on my video. I should save this for the, the comments uh, video, but somebody did say in the comments that the the intro was too long on the vi on the videos and I took too long to get to tasting the beer. Well, that's just me. That's what I do. If you don't like it, you can skip the video and you can just skip forward for the tasting. There's the cap. Somebody mentioned as well that the quality of the footage on these on this particular camera is pretty crap and he's got a point i'm gonna cede to that um that camera wasn't cheap it's a canon eos and it's it's not great to be honest i don't know whether it's anything to do with the lighting maybe if i improve the light in here it, it may improve the quality of the picture but that's where i am at the moment i'm getting some some nice aromas from this Mm. Fairly spicy. Slightly, slightly fruity. But there is a, a citrusy twang to it as well. It, it smells okay, but it's starting to smell like the kind of aroma that I got from Tribute and Proper Job as well. And uh, the... The malt characteristic on this, vague hints of caramel and possibly even toffee malt, which is a, a nice welcome addition to this. I think I'm getting the aroma of that rye because it does smell quite spicy. And it smells I'm not going to say unpleasant, but the, the aroma does remind me slightly of a golden ale for some reason. I don't know whether that's psycho-semantic or what, but that's what it's doing for me. There it is in the glass. It's fairly dark. I'd say that's a chestnut, chestnutty colour. Some might call it a ruby, but I think there's, a, there's an amber hue to it. I can see the, the floaters. I can see some floaters in it. I can see the yeast sediment in there. Again, they say don't pour it in there, but 
I'm going to pour it in there because fucking anarchy in the UK. There you go. Right, let's get it down the hatch. Bottoms up. Let me dive in again. And again, I have to say, this has got some flavor to it, but it's pretty much in keeping with what I was saying earlier about the St. Austell stuff. And that really, that is, I wouldn't say it's disappointing, but it's what I would expect. <clears throat> I do get some of the rye in there. There is a little spicy note to it. There's quite a leafy, um, how can I put this? Leafy, um, what was it? Greenery, uh, herbal type flavor to it as well. And some fruity notes to it, like uh, raisin and sultana, that kind of thing. Um, Mouth feels okay, quite full bodied, but generally slightly better than proper job and the tribute, which is their flagship beer. I think this this has got a bit more. A little bit more, not a lot, but a little bit more character to it. There's a slight orange peel, sweet orange peel, if you can imagine that. Bit of a contradiction in terms, but that's the, the kind of flavour I'm getting. I'm not really getting the sweet malt or the, the characteristic of the crystal malt. Normally you do get quite big... I wouldn't say sweet flavours, but nice malty flavours from Crystal Malt, and I'm not really getting that here. It isn't bad, I have to say. It's not... Again, it's, it's typical of the St. Austell stuff. Not offensive. No nasties. Just a little bit... Oh, run of the mill. I think that's that's how I would describe it. And there is a little bit of flavour in there, don't get me wrong. I'm, it sounds like I'm being harsh, and it's not, don't get me wrong, it's not in a par with Marston's or anything like that. But compared to the, the Bath Ales gem, which was, they called it an amber ale. Um, whether you can compare the two, I don't know. But that was, for me, that was infinitely better. And I am comparing the two because... Uh, Bath Ales is owned by St. the St. Austell Brewery. But, I have to say, all in all, it's what I expected, to be honest. Yeah, a little bit more of the hop character coming through. And there is a little bit of a, a spicy twang on it. Not the black pepper bitterness that you would get in a bitter, but... It's more of a, I don't know, um, what kind of spice would that be? I don't know, what is that? A lemon citrus mixed with almost like a, sort of a nutmeg mixed with black pepper. I know I'm starting to sound like a fucking pretentious tosser, but... I am getting that that kind of flavour, and this is about right. This is, uh, I would say, cold cellar temperature, if if that makes sense. Now, if you went to a, a pub in the summer and you got a, an ale from the cellar, it would be slightly warmer. In winter, obviously, a cellar is going to be colder. So, this is the sort of temperature it is. And I, I'm still getting all the flavours and the aromas as well. There is a creaminess to it, which I always find you get with 
crystal malt. That sort of, sort of a creamy sweetness to it, which is there as well. And actually, the more I drink, this is becoming a little bit more complex. Which is nice. I'm not going to say, you know, that, that's a bad thing. But, I don't know, I'm probably discovering more as I drink. That, that aroma now. Wow. That aroma now is, is really yielding up the aromas of that crystal malt. It's like a, like a creamy sweetness, if you can imagine that. And it is quite nice. Almost toffee-like. And it's actually becoming a little bit more complex as I, as I drink, so I sort of take back what I said about it not having much character. This, it's starting to, to sort of grow on me, and the more you analyze the flavors, the more, the more you realize that this, there's more to this than meets the, meets the palate, if you like. You still got that big seam of what I can only class as like a bitter lemon. And a, and a bit of a longer finish on it now as well. That's probably down to that rye. That's probably what I'm tasting on that. The spiciness that you do get with rye and the, the, the full bodied, or the full body on this. And Look, it can't be that bad if I've drunk that much already. And it's going down very nicely indeed. Um, I'll take back what I said about St. Austell being a little bit run of the mill. This is, uh, this is not too bad. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not bowling me over, but it's a little bit better than the other stuff they do, put it that way. Yeah, quite nice. So what is the verdict on Hicks? Traditional, strong, Cornish ale, bottle conditioned. Yeah, this is slightly better than the other stuff that I've tried from the St. Austell Brewery. Now, everyone's, well, I'm assuming everyone has tried Tribute and Proper Job. You'll get them in the supermarkets. Uh, you'll see Tribute, certainly down here. I'm saying this and I'm taking this for granted, but a lot of the people who live up further north may not see this they may get their own regional beer in the supermarkets but i do know that asda so stock this uh, lidl's used to stock st austell i'm not sure whether they still do or not most of the stuff around my local lidl's is the shepherd name which of course is the local brewery um, but i think certainly in the south of england and sort of up to, i would say up to maybe Watford and past that in the super, most supermarkets you can find a, a St Austell brewery beer which is not bad in my opinion because they are independent they don't have the the distribution networks that Marston's have which Molson Coors have and you know the, the big AB InBev type macro brewers have and they still manage to get their beer out which is good i mean i'm all for this as well independent brewer supporting i mean they're quite good they sponsor the cornish pirates rugby team they sponsor the uh, plymouth Argyle football team i think they have something to do with the is it british surfing or something like that they sponsor that and if you're a music fan <laughs> not really my thing but you know if you like your sea shanties there's a, a a group called the fisherman's friends who are based in north cornwall or who i don't know whether they're still going i think they are but they're, they're from port isaac which is in north cornwall went there didn't stop it was packed with tourists so couldn't find parking so didn't stop there but that's a nice part of the world port isaac but the uh, the group started off in a pub and they started singing sea shanties and eventually went from strength to strength. There is a film out about them. It looks really good. I haven't seen it yet, but I am gonna watch it at some point because 
yeah, that looks that does look interesting, and it's filmed all around Port Isaac. And I think the if you've ever seen, if you're a UK viewer, if you've ever seen the series Doc Martin, I think that's filmed around Port Isaac as well. But um, getting back to this beer and the brewery, uh, I think this is probably one of your better options if you're going to drink some St. Austell beer. Now, I think you can get this in, well, it's bottle conditioned, I know, but I think you probably can get this on cask. If you can, and you're in a St. Austell pub, I think this is going to be slightly more agreeable than, well, not really slightly more agreeable, but slightly more flavoursome than the proper job or the tribute. But again, that's just my personal taste. I don't mind this. It's not an outstanding beer. I will make that clear now. But in terms of what St. Austell do, and to be honest, I do have a bias towards these breweries. I love to see these breweries doing well, and I'm really glad that they're doing well, and I don't really want to run them down because, I mean, these are, this is our heritage, but I just wish that their beer had a little bit more character. But this is on the right track, I will say that. That's Percy at the door, he's not coming in. He nicked a load of my wife's Slim Fast and ate that, came in, threw it all up, and now his farts are absolutely horrendous. They could strip wallpaper and the plaster off the wall. But enough about Percy's Harris. What's the verdict on this? It's not bad, it's better than the usual fare. I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10 and no more. I've been maybe being a little bit generous there, but it's not bad, it's better than the usual stuff. Yeah, very agreeable. Goes down nice. Um, if you if you want to session it, you can. It's five percent, but you know if you if you if you're going for it, this is not a bad option. Certainly, if I'm in an hostel pub, I'll be going for some of this, and there's nothing else. I, will, I won't be going for the Korev. Not really my thing, to be honest. It's just boring. I wouldn't say it's boring, but it's just a palate cleanser. Certainly better than the, the macro brood stuff, but just, yeah, just not my thing. But this ain't bad. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Um, I'm going to recommend it if you're in a St. Austell pub, if you're down in the West Country. And you've got a choice of this, the proper job or the uh, tribute stuff. I would say go for this. There's more, a, a bit more character in this. And there you go. And remember, beer is working class champagne. <laughs>